Okay, so this is an introduction to um, setting up environment lighting for the Arnold renderer, um, exterior environment lighting. It's pretty simple. We're going to go through um, how to set up uh, the procedural map, how to use uh, the environment setup tab, and also how to use a skylight. Uh, I want to thank um, Sean, who's a student on my course, who's done this very nice house uh, model, which I've been using in this tutorial. And let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so let's set up the Arnold renderer. So I'm going to go into settings and drag this across. Uh, we've got our Arnold renderer here. Click on that. And just going to check a couple of things. So I want to go into system and I want to turn on um, Legacy 3 DS Max support because it's kind of a trip me up if you do certain things in Max. Then I'm going to set a HDV video frame size and I'm just going to knock this down to 800 just so it's not going to kill our rendering. So next uh, we're going to drag in a physical camera. Have a look at the frame. So I'm just going to press shift F to um, put the save frame on and zoom in a bit, get my angle. Something like that will be cool. Um, another top trick is if you, um, once you've set your camera position, it's a good idea to freeze it in place. So the way to do that is with the camera selected, you go into um, this hierarchy mode, click on link info and then just lock moves and do the same for the target so we're just going to lock the moves there so now I can't move my camera accidentally which can be really annoying if you're doing lighting and multi-pass stuff especially right then so um, I can't render this now because there's no lighting in the scene so let's do a very simple lighting setup initially so we're going to go into rendering um, environment and uh, we're going to choose a map So you want to make sure we get the Arnold environment map, not this uh, physical sun and sky environment map. So just going to choose physical sky. And then I've got my um, slate editor over here. And let's just drag that in and have a look at what is going on. Make sure it's an instance, otherwise anything we change here won't get updated into the render. So we've got various tools to uh, set some position, turn it on. Uh, really, there's not actually much we need to adjust here, so we can just have a go at rendering. Um, so there's a couple of last things I'm going to do. I tend to, because I don't like having per camera exposure values, once I've set an exposure value, it tends to be the same for all the cameras. So I'm going to turn this value off. And I've got a value exposure value set to 12, and I've no idea if that's going to be good until I test render it. So just let's just have a peek. So let's just render production. And we can see it's too dark, so I'm just going to stop that. And let's just have another go with eight. So that's a bit better. And that's really all there is to um, setting up the Arnold renderer. You just drag the sky in. Um, set an exposure value and off you go. Right, so let's look at adjusting um, our setup. So I've just um, changed the frame slightly to make it a little prettier. Um, so what I'm going to do is adjust the sky position and adjust the sun position. And we're going to do that in this, the active shade mode. So once I jump jump over to there, it normally be set to skyline render, so I'm just going to make sure that I switch back to Arnold. And now that's all kind of set up and ready to go. I've got my frame size, I've got the Arnold render, and it's set into actual shade node. So let's just render that. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. But the bonus is, if I, let's see, let's go rendering environment. This is all live. So now I can affect uh, the physical sky position. I'm going to just switch over to my material editor and I'm going to drag the physical sky into here and I'm going to make sure that that is an instance and now 
as I, if I could just close that window there. Um, so now as I adjust things, everything will update. And you can see it's pretty ropey, like, but I'm adjusting the orbit of the sun position and then adjusting the shadow position on here, which is quite cool. I can drop the sun position down and we can get something pretty dramatic. If I just tweak it, we should eventually be able to see our sun pop into view over. He's got a sun angle, and there it is, in fact. So let's just drop it down over here. Uh, we can change our sun size, make it bigger. So there we have some crazy big sun in the background. Uh, we can also adjust the um, turbidity of the sky. So this is going to make it look more overcast and blown out. And uh, let's just knock the sun up again. So as I whack that up, you can see that everything becomes a bit more diffuse. If I drop that down again, everything becomes bluer and sharper. Right, so that's pretty cool. There's not much to that. So now we're going to look at how to use the Sky Dome. So the first thing I'm going to do is in environment, I'm just going to make sure that this is off and clear. So yeah, there you go. Then I'm going to drag a light into the scene and a marbled light. Now, it doesn't really matter where it is, but it has drifted off, so let's just kind of grab it back again. And we'll stick it somewhere like there. Cool, so now we can actually see our camera and our light at the same time, which is good. Right, so it's on. Uh, we're going to set the type to Sky Dome. And currently the color is set to white, uh, so we can see what that does. So notice how the environment is black, and that's because there's nothing in the environment map. Um, but we can make our shape visible, like shape visible, and then render it again. And now you can see our environment is white, because that's the colour that we have set. Uh, so clearly just having an all white environment is no good unless you're doing some weird production photography. So let's uh, sort this out to be environmentally correct. So we're going to set a texture, and simply the texture we want is just another physical sky. So let's just drop that, and then we'll render it again. And there we are back again to something similar that uh, we had before. Only now... Um, if I cancel this in render settings, so active shade mode, it's already set to Arnold. So now when I click on render, rather than going to the material tab to adjust things, I can actually just rotate the sphere. So let's just do that. And you see key is rotating my light around. Like that, which is pretty cool. So now we've got these simple concepts under our belt, um, how to set up environment in how to set up the actual light. Uh, we can move on to using HDR maps. Uh, so this lighting setup is cool. Um, it's very generic, it's procedural, but there's no detail in the sky, which is kind of dull. So if we want to get clouds and stuff, um, we can go to choice here and try and render them, which is like hugely expensive, or we can use a texture. Uh, and if you want to use a texture, then the ideal thing to use is an HDR map, an HDR sphere, in fact. So I'm just going to draw your attention to um, a site called hdrmaps.com. They have a whole bunch of freebies in their freebie section. Uh, you just sign in for an account, and then you can download all of these. And these are really great. Um, if you want to use um, some cool stuff in production, then they have a whole bunch of... Um, very cool skies, which they sell, these HDR skies. Um, I'm not affiliated with them, so I really don't care if you use this site or not. But anyway, they do have some freebies, and they are very good. Um, so let's grab one of these, uh, which I've done already, and we're going to use this in our light. So uh, I'll go to our map again, 
Now this time I'm going to find a general, I'm going to use bitmap. Uh, so here's the folder from hdrmaps.com. We've got multiple files. Uh, we've got a JPEG, which is very high res. Uh, we've got a smaller resolution just as a preview. And then we've got two high dynamic, high dynamic range images. Uh, uh, one which is low res, uh, which is soft and blurry, and one which is high res. So let's see what that does. So I'm just going to load this HDR, and that is a low, a low res image, and it's deliberately blurry, and you can see it in here. Um, so this is giving our exposure of this image because it's high dynamic range, and I'm just going to leave it to the default exposure and OK that. So that, that's now gotten into our Arnold light, and uh, remember that I didn't adjust the exposure in the image, and that's because I adjust the exposure here. So we've still got the, um, the shape visible, uh, we've got our texture loaded, we just need to make sure that we, our format is set to lat long because it's a lat long texture. And then let's run it again. So now I've rendered the scene, you can see there's this green smear over to the right of my image, and that's because my sky dome is in the wrong orientation. So what I need to do is go and into here, type 90, tab 0, tab 0. So this is the rotation transform of the um, light. Um, and you get to that by right clicking on transform and rotate. Uh, and now when I render, you should see that we actually have sky. So let's cancel that. Um, and in fact, when it does recover, so if I go over, over to active shade mode, uh, click render. So now I can rotate my skylight around. You can see that the lighting changes correctly. And, and this is due to the way that the texture coordinates are working on the skylight. So you may have noticed that, which is a little bit weird, uh, we've actually set the texture coordinates on the light itself to be that long. And actually down here in our texture, we've actually set it to explicit match and all. So what you can also do is you can set it to spherical environment like this. And then actually what happens is, I'll go back again, changing uh, this has no effect at all. You can see that uh, the lighting texture stays the same. And if you do it like that, um, you can still rotate the light, but we have to narrow or zero it, which kind of makes more sense. So if I zero the lighting rotation now, uh, you can see that we're back to a sensible sky and I can rotate it around and we get sensible lighting. So what you'll notice is that the background is actually very soft. So we can sharpen that by getting a high resolution texture. So let's do that and just close that again. So I'm going to go into my HDR map and I can, rather than using this blurry environment, I can use this sharp one, which is the EXR file. So this is higher resolution. And it's meant to be used for um, reflections if you split out separate reflections, but we can also use it in our sky dome. So let's render that now in the active shader. And you can see now that we've got a much more high res image in our background. You can actually see some cloud detail but it's a little bit soft. So it's fine if you're going to use some depth of field, but otherwise it's just a little bit too soft to be practical. So what we need to do about that is we need to split out our background into a separate texture map. So the way we do that is like this. So we go back into, so if I just drag this over here, so now I've got a copy. So we go back into our running environment And I'll drag this texture map into here, make an instance, and then down here, rather than the XR file, I'm going to choose this very high res JPEG. And you can 
can see that updates. Oops, and that's because I forgot to turn off that. So now I've hidden the foreground on my light. And so now we've got a sharp background and the IBL image based lighting as a renderer. Uh, so what we can do is you can turn this on, you can see we've got some cloud position and we've got our house position. And because I've zeroed my light and my textures, they're all in the same place. So what you should notice that this is actually having a bit of a lighting contribution. So if I go over here and I turn the light off, um, the environment map is in fact contributing to my lighting. So um, in order to stop my JPEG um, affecting my environment, I need to just turn this off. Um, so we're going to go into the Arnold renderer and going down into environment background atmosphere. And I'm just going to turn off enable. So now when I render the scene, everything is black because this environment map is contributing zero and my light is off. So if I turn the light back on again, now um, the scene is just lit with my environment map and my background is now not contributing anything apart from looking pretty. Okay, so there you have it. That's how to add an HDR map into your scene, um, how to adjust the settings so that you can have uh, a high res background and your light working with an HDR map. Uh, we've covered also how to use the procedural maps. And uh, I just want to thank again um, Sean for letting me use his very cool house.